Uh, welcome back to the Evolution of Sport talk. Uh, our next talk is by Krishna Ramchandran, the co-founder of Ubersense Technology, and he's going to be uh, speaking a lot more about mobile devices. So with that, I'd like to welcome Krishna to the stage. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, it's exciting to be here. So I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ubersense Inc. We're a Boston-based startup and we make it ridiculously easy for athletes and amateurs to improve in sports anytime, anywhere. It's, it's going to be a very different talk. It's more consumer focused and how you can use mobile devices to change the way people learn and play sports. You know, people are passionate about learning sports and want to improve. They read books, take expensive lessons, buy costly accessories. But when it comes to applying theory into practice, things fall apart completely. But video as a medium of teaching someone is very effective. Because using video, you can show someone what they're doing wrong and actually help them improve their technique and their biomechanics. Turns out this concept is not new. People have been doing this for years together. Top level teams, MLB, NFL, professional sports people, and Olympic level teams have been using devices like this to record the athletes' techniques, give feedback. Unfortunately, these are very cumbersome to use. This is just one example of the kinds of devices that are out there that people are using. Trolleys that are extremely cumbersome, you have to move them around. Worst part is they are completely outdated in their functionality. It's a pain to record videos, analyze it, and share it with the people who need it most. And worst of all, it's very, very expensive. It costs thousands to ten thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So really, there's no excuse to use these kinds of devices when mobile devices are becoming more and more ubiquitous. So the company was really founded with a very simple vision. What if you could use your device, your iPhone or your iPad, something that you already own, to record yourself, get feedback on it, and improve and track your performance? So that was the founding vision of the company, and we're making some progress around that. And our goal is really to use mobile devices to help people improve, to help track their performance, and also help them collaborate with their friends and coaches. Turns out, um, actually, we made some progress around that. We have a few Olympic teams who are using our solution on their iPad and their iPhones to improve the athlete's technique. The US bobsled and skeleton team up, up in Lake Placid uses our solution to record their athlete's technique at the start of a bobsled run and a skeleton run, and also record their turns when they're whizzing past at 80 miles per hour. But the best part is that the head coaches of these Olympic level teams can use their iPad to give instant actionable feedback on the track Without having, going, without having to go back to a conference room, plugging in their laptop or their digital camera, throwing up a video and then analyzing it. That's the power of mobile devices and what can happen if, it's, if the solutions are created in a nice way. It's not just the mobile, oh sorry, Olympic level teams. Our solution is now available through the App Store to the millions of people out there. We don't have millions of users yet, we have about, about 550,000 installs around the world. Collectively, they've analyzed and improved their, um, their sporting techniques for over 4 million user activities for sports like golf, baseball, tennis, swimming, running, cycling, gymnastics, track and field, and so forth. So I want to quickly jump into a demo to give you a feel for how the solution looks. Um, and hopefully it'll give you an idea of how powerful it can be if, if, if used in regular day-to-day -day life for, improve pe for improving people's techniques. So I'm gonna give you a demo of our golf app for swing analysis. It's called Swing Reader Golf. It's available on the App Store. And my goal is not, here, is not to be here to pitch the company or pitch our apps or our products. It's really to open up the eyes to what is capable using devices like this now, and how if the solutions are created right, people can improve very easily. So um, 
it's very easy to record a video. So imagine a coach is standing behind a golfer, or even a friend or a golfer has actually set up his iPhone on a tripod, and he's on the course or on the range and trying to record himself. Hits the record button, and quickly you know, tapes his video with the countdown timer saved. I won't go through that process because it's very easy to do. But once the video is on here, I'm just gonna take a really good video of Keegan Bradley. You can play it back very easily. But the best part is that you can slow down the video all the way to one frame per second. Not only that, you can use your finger to swipe this video around, like so. This is very, very useful because I don't have to fiddle around with the play, pause button, rewind button, forward button to get to that exact point in the video that I want to analyze. You can take this a step further and analyze Keegan's biomechanics or his setup. So I use the drawing tools on this app to draw a quick swing plane like so, right? I can also measure angles between various parts of the body, like so, and I can track his head movement, like so. I can take this a step further and compare Keegan's technique against someone else's technique. So let's say an amateur wants to compare his technique against a professional or an amateur wants to compare his technique from one training session to another. This applies to all sports, it's not specific only to golf. I can pick another video, say I pick Jim Furyk. In this case, these two videos are overlaid right on top of each other. I can easily adjust the transparency like so. Or I can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now this is super effective in helping people see what they're doing wrong and also compare their technique against professionals and reference videos in order to improve. A coach can take this to the next level and even give feedback to an athlete by hitting a simple button. So in this case, you know, this is, uh, he's sliding towards the base and his, Head is uh, his leg is pointed all the way up when in fact it should be pointed down so that he can steal one if the opportunity exists. So what I just said and drew is actually recorded as part of a video. So you get the idea. But the power in this solution is to take that video, instantly upload it to our web server. I haven't signed in, but once you sign in, you can store it online, then you can distribute it to the athlete, the person can log in, look at those videos offline, you know, learn from it and really improve. So, at a high level, you know, mobile devices and apps like these can help people improve their technique. But that's only one part of the equation, right? Technique analysis needs to be fused in with endurance training as well as nutrition training in order to improve people's performance. And there are several efforts out there that uh, people are trying in order to address each of those different pillars, if you will, right? There's shirts coming out from Under Armour, like the E39 that allows you to track your heart rate, your, um, your, your speed of your explosion speed. There's the Nike sweatband that allows you to track the number of steps you've taken any day. Accelerometer data can be then used to uh, overlay your performance with how you're doing in the real world. You can compare your performance against other people. Uh, there are things like Fitbit, which give you similar information. There are connect-like devices that you can use to get skeletal data about yourself, right? And that skeletal data can be used to fine-tune your biomechanics. And then at the end of it, there's devices or solutions like ours where video 
is used to communicate in an effective way how people should improve. The problem with the approach that everyone is taking right now is that everyone's oper operating in their own silos. No one is communicating with each other. And the industry as a whole needs to come together, define standards via which people can take in data from these different sensors that are on people's bodies and then create applications that make sense of all this data in order to help people improve. And this is a far-fetched vision, but it can be done. Take the internet, for example. A bunch of machines all around the world not really communicating with each other. And now there are standards that are defined by the industry for letting people communicate no matter where they're located. And I think the same can be achieved in, the, in, in sports performance improvement, especially given the, uh, if, given the explosion and the ease of access to devices like body sensors and things like that. So uh, with that, I'll end my talk. Uh, I guess it was a very short talk, um, but I'll open it up to any questions that people may have. I was wondering, are there any specific sports that you felt like um, you know, your technology is very like more beneficial or like there's just a, a bigger advantage in those specific sports? Uh, it definitely has good applications in highly technical sports like golf, baseball, tennis, swimming. Uh, but based on the data that we're getting from the marketplace, actually people are using it for sports that we hadn't even envisioned it for. So, um, you know, a classic example is um, is gymnastics, uh, where people are, you know, analyzing their um, their technique when on the pole vault or what have you. Of course, it's a highly technical sport, but we hadn't built it for that. But we're getting all this data that shows that it can be used even there. On that, how? Could your mobile devices replace cameras that can actually capture, you know, all 22 players on the field at once? Right. So in that situation, mobile devices add, complement the devices out there actually capturing video, and if that information can then be streamed to the mobile device, then it can be instantly viewed on the field in order to give feedback to the entire team. So you mentioned before that uh, I think it was some, something like half a million users right now, is that correct? So can you talk about the breakdown of that by sport or maybe by uh, amateur, professional, and how much of that breakdown then uh, to follow up do you feel comes from your efforts in pushing it out there versus more of a pull strategy and what people were demanding? Um, so I would say about 80 to 90% of our user base is actually amateurs using it on a regular basis, and the rest is professional coaches who are using it to improve the athlete's performance. Uh, so that's the breakdown. Um, our go-to-market strategy was to start with golf, and then we slowly uh, diversify to baseball and the other sports. So a large population of our users are actually golfers, uh, but we are seeing uptake in all the other sports as well. You talked about standardizing a platform so that everyone involved in the industry can own the product and participate in making all this a lot easier from an accessibility standpoint. If you look three and five years out when everyone got along and participated, what is the future state? What, how, what do you, how do you see things working, particularly with respect to your product? So, um, a so there's already efforts towards standardization, but I think it needs to be made better. Like a Boston-based company called Fitness Keeper is trying to create a health graph where multiple devices can plug in and send information, and then that information can then be used to create higher-level applications that make use of that data. Right? Um, 
five or six years from now, I envision a world where connect-like sensors that give you depth data are embedded in cell phones or you know, iPads, along with you know, small sensors that you can put on your body to track movement of individual parts. Uh, overlaid with information that you know the NFL is trying out, where they put sensors on you know inside the uniform to track people's movements and whatnot. If that information is made publicly available, then very very interesting applications can be created. Very similar to what the PGA Tour is doing with Shot Link, uh, MLB with um, with data that they're publishing and things like that. interested to know a little bit more about the workflow in the bobsleigh example. Um, are there multiple iPads along the course? H how does the athlete actually get that feedback from the coach, or is it just getting the shot from the start and they go back up for the next one? Or right, so their, uh, their usual practice runs are they just keep practicing the start several times, and it's a short track that they practice that on. And so the coach is usually standing on the side recording them you know, doing multiple practice sessions, and then they give them feedback on what they need to do to improve. Uh, the tracks are usually at competitions where, you know, the video is recorded and then people are analyzing it after a run. Okay, well, thank you very much. I enjoyed presenting here.